most popular betting markets have various odds on how the top three could play out. Why do we care about the top three? Well, you might have heard the Texans have the third overall pick in the NFL draft. They also have the 13th pick thanks to the Deshaun Watson trade with the Browns. So the odds for the number one overall pick at various sports books, most have Aiden Hutchinson as the clear-cut favorite. And you could see it anywhere from like minus 270. I saw at BUSR. I got DraftKings up right here. They're at minus 280. So it seems like the consensus is after the offseason the Jaguars have had that Wolverine Watt, Cody's crush, is going to go number one to Jacksonville. That's sad. You all right? I'll be okay. You're I'll still get to see him twice a year. Yeah, you don't want to see him twice I know. a year. <laughs> That's the thing. I don't want to see him twice a year. You ready to pour some out for your Wolverine Watt to Houston dreams? Yeah, he's going to have to be, I don't know. There, has, there hasn't been like a legendary pass rusher from Jacksonville in the past few years. Has there been a legendary anything from Jacksonville ever? I don't know. John Henderson was pretty good at defensive tackle, and he had the people slap him in the face before games. Tony Baselli's finally in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. 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 They, I guess they have a couple. Yeah, Aiden Hutchinson, minus 280 some places. Like, that's, I mean, it seems, especially with the way that Jacksonville's operated in free agency, they kept Cam Robinson on the franchise tag. It was his second franchise tag. Pass rusher is very, very much the favorite there with Hutchinson being the favorite of the pass rushers. But Trevon Walker, the Georgia defensive end, sneaking in at number two in the odds, that was very interesting to me as well. Well, it seems like the consensus on the top pass rusher is now moving away from Thibodeau and moving in favor of Walker. Hutchinson's probably going one. But then at number two, as you look at the Lions up with the second pick, the odds-on favorite at a lot of sports books is Trevon Walker at plus 250 to be the second player taken in the draft. The guy's an athletic freak. Mm -hmm. He's one of the best athletes we've ever seen coming out of college at any position. He's raw. I mean, his numbers last year weren't great. He did get better as the year progressed. He showed out for Georgia in the playoff and in the SEC championship game. The dude's got potential to be a really, really good player at the next level. But you compare his numbers in college to Aiden Hutchinson or Kayvon Thibodeau, and they're not quite the same. But, man, people... Fall in love with combine numbers. People fall in love with pro days. People fall in love with clay, right? So many of these coaches, so many of these front offices think they can mold these guys into special players. It's like, oh my God, you give me a guy with that skill set, I can turn him in to the next great pass rusher in this league. Trayvon Walker, one of the most intriguing draft prospects in this entire class because of that sheer athleticism that he has that nobody else this year has. It is, you know, sometimes... The conversation around guys like, oh well, what was they, what were they asked to do in college, and this and that. And I understand he wasn't asked to just, you know, rush the passer nonstop, and you know, set out at wide on the edge and get after it from that spot. I, I get that, but man, he'd love to see more than just six sacks on the guy's mm-hmm. resume for this season. Now, the six sacks sometimes in the SEC, you can pad your stats against some bad teams, Vanderbilt's and things like that. A lot of his sacks came in huge huge games and huge spots. Alabama game, he had a sack in the national championship. He had a sack against Michigan. He had a sack earlier in the year against Clemson. The game against Auburn, he had a sack. It's like big moments for those, but, man, you'd love to just see we even the, the pressure percentage, the pressure yep. rate. We talk about that with Kayvon Thibodeau. You'd even like to see that a little bit higher when you start thinking about Trevon Walker. But, hey, you know what? Take him off the board, Detroit. I don't want the Texans <laughs> to be thinking about this cat at three. So go ahead and take him off the board. Get him out of the Texans' opportunity to pick him at three. Are you guys familiar with the RAS metric, relative athletic score? I thought yeah. it was raw athletic score. It's relative? According to the website, it is relative. Interesting. Trayvon Walker scored a 9.99 RAS out of a possible 10, oh, which okay. ranks second out of 1,000. 413 defensive ends measured from 1987 to 2022. Is the number one person someone that I would notice? Like, do you have the number one person in front of you? Twitter does. Who is it? Is it someone that I would be like, oh, yeah, of course it was that guy? Miles Garrett. Okay, yeah, of course it was that guy. That guy turned out <laughs> to be pretty damn good. So if you tell me Trevon Walker ends up being Miles Garrett, great pick by the Lions at number two. That's it. He's He's got the potential... Like that. I mean, he wasn't nearly as productive as Miles Garrett was in college. If he was, he would be surefire 1-1 one, one ahead of Aiden Hutchinson. But he's got that type of athleticism that you just don't find at that position very often. Now, it's worth noting 
that Malik Willis has plus 400 odds to go number two. Walker's the favorite. Hutchinson, Hamilton, Kyle Hamilton, the safety from Notre Dame, and Malik Willis are all plus 400. That Hmm. is the highest quarterback that you will find to go number one. So it seems like the consensus now is Malik Willis is the first quarterback off the board, and there is some rumors that maybe the Lions would take him if they quote-unquote fell in love. And I think this is all good for the Texans yeah. because then you have basically your pick of any player you want besides Aiden Hutchinson at number three because you knew the Texans were not going to be taking a quarterback that high. So then you look at the Texans' odds, and right now the odds on favorite for them to select is a guy that I think would be a great pick, and he's my favorite player in the draft. I think he's the best player in the draft. Akeem Aquanu, the tackle from NC State. Plus 180, Ooh. a favorite to go to the Texans. Number two on the list here, Evan Neal at plus 250. So you talk about offensive line, tackles that could also play guard for a year if need be. The Texans, in this scenario, if the Vegas odds are right, they get their pick of any offensive lineman they want at number three. I mean, it makes sense at that point. You, the Texans could use some offensive linemen if you felt like one of these guys could play left guard or right tackle for a year and then slide over to left tackle if Laramie Tunsil's time is indeed only one more year. Just from a value standpoint, though, might be worth a little sprinkle on Trayvon Walker and Kayvon Thibodeau at three just because those guys have big odds. Plus 650, plus 750, a little I'm sprinkle on those. I'm thinking Kyle Hamilton at plus 750. Plus I mean, 750 for Kyle Hamilton. How many mock drafts have we seen over the last couple of weeks that have the Texans selecting Kyle Hamilton at three? So here, 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 here you get into a fascinating discussion as well. Now, this is just number three overall selection. This is not necessarily number three overall selection by the Houston Texans. Good point. Malik Willis is sitting there at plus 1,200. A little sprinkle on Malik Willis in case somebody gets froggy and jumps up to three. Malik Willis ends up as the third overall selection and then a trade back. Sure. I think there are people out there who think the Texans could take Malik Willis at three. Now, those people, I don't think, followed the Houston Texans because I don't think the Texans plan on doing that. But because Nick Casario and Lovey Smith have not completely shut down the idea of drafting a quarterback with that third overall selection, I'm sure there are people who are thinking, ah, maybe there is a chance the Texans do take a QB at three, but you're right. Yeah, you could get some extra value with a trade up to that spot. Man, Detroit's interesting. Uh, to me, the draft starts at number two. We don't know exactly what Jacksonville is going to do at number one. We got a hunch. We though. got a hunch that it's Aiden Hutchinson, but at two, anytime a quarterback goes off the board when you don't expect a quarterback to go off the board, it shakes everything up. If the Lions take Malik Willis at two, then Atlanta is going to be panicking, and Carolina is going to be panicking, and Seattle might start to panic, and all of these other teams that thought, okay, if we stand pat later in the top 10, we would get our choice of QB that we wanted, they might all be like, oh my God, we, we got to trade, because another team might be trading too. I think that's what you want if you're the Texans. I really do. I, I think you want to see Malik Willis go number two overall to where one of those teams picking later in the top 10 just completely freaks out and feels the need that they've got to jump super high to make sure they get the dude that they want before somebody else does. If the board breaks the way the odds have it, you might get a lot of calls for people wanting to come up, though, to take one of these two offensive linemen, which would be also beneficial sure. for Nick Casario. Like, my big thing with the Texans has to be you got to trade out from one of the two spots in the first round, either at 3 or 13. Because I just can't justify a team that needs so much staying at both spots instead of trading out and getting more picks. you got a great scenario where you could do exactly that if the board breaks and the top two offensive linemen are on the board when you're sitting there at number three. Yeah, there's a couple of different things that can happen in the draft where you still end up with top two offensive linemen. Could be Hutchinson quarterback. Could be Hutchinson Trevon Walker. Yeah. You still get a shot at one of those top two offensive linemen. I think you could justify standing, Pat. I mean, if you have the ability to get the top offensive lineman, and let's say a Sauce Gardner somehow falls to you at 13, and you feel like you got oh. the top guy at multiple positions. Don't tease me, BK. I, I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. But like, if you have the chance to get a top guy at two different positions in this draft, well, maybe it's Kyle Hamilton who falls, then that's how you justify not trading down. Like, I'll, I'll be ticked off if Sauce Gardner or Kyle Hamilton are there at like 13 and the Texans decide to trade down just to get a couple of more picks. Like, if you've got the chance to leave the draft, leave the first round of the draft with arguably the two best players at two different positions, that, to me, is a way you can justify staying put. I don't see Sauce Gardner making it to 13, and I don't see Kyle Hamilton making it to 13. So something short of that, trading down has to be the move you try to make if you want to try and maximize 
the return that you ended up getting from Deshaun Watson. I know you're high on Thibodeau, Jake. What if Thibodeau falls to 13? I mean, he's not graded as the best edge rusher here, but if you could get, like, Aquanu and Kayvon Thibodeau without trading, are you signing up for that? Yeah, run, so, run, the, run the ticket in. Run the little card up there to the stage. Yeah, so three players that if they're at 13, I'm good without trading down, would be Thibodeau, Sauce Gardner, and Kyle Hamilton. Okay. Other than that, I... We'd be really surprised if they took like if they took Jordan Davis. They'd be like, "Come on, man, trade down and just get extra picks over taking a defensive lineman." Mm-hmm. 713-780-ESPN ESPN's the number. You let us know on the text line your thoughts on the odds involving the Houston Texans in the draft situation.